And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast with an automated uh, answering system. <clears throat> you know those things you always hate when you call a business or something and it's not a real person and it's just frustrating. <laughs> well, it's not like we've given out our phone number, so there's there's no way anybody could verify this. <laughs> it's true. You'll just have to take our word for it, like everything else on this show. <laughs> Um, but yes, this week we watched the first four episodes of The Invasion. Um, we didn't finish the serial this week, unlike we do m- most weeks, because it's eight episodes, and due to some scheduling conflicts and not much time this week, we didn't want to watch eight episodes. Yeah, so we only watched four, and it was pretty convenient, actually. Yeah, it worked out. It stopped in a pretty good place. <laughs> actually <laughs> yeah i mean it's not like i would have wanted the serial to flat out end where it does because that would suck but uh that'd be great and then just the next story just starts with like dr jamie and zoe materializing somewhere random and just like man that was a great adventure just forget about resolving the conflict <laughs> um but yes this starts off with um the TARDIS <laughs> materializing right. by the moon. And and they kind of just they, they kind of just dialogue their way out of the dilemma that was uh brought up in the last serial. They were like, Yeah, I can't believe we actually did get out of there. We only had a fifty fifty chance to survive. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> uh, so where are we? <clears throat> and the doctor's like, Oh, we're on the other side of the moon. And then the other side of the moon there's some sort of weird base or spaceship type thing. Yeah. That launches a missile at the TARDIS <laughs> and blows it up <laughs> for the second serial in a row. Rest in peace. Yeah, last season had base under siege. This this season has exploding TARDIS. <clears throat> Way less prevalent, but somehow present in every serial. No. Well, it no, wasn't. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't in the Dominators. Yeah, it wasn't in the Dominators. Um, but yeah, somehow they uh. When they come to, they're on Earth. They've they've materialized. I guess somehow. the doctor frantically pushing buttons and pulling switches somehow got them out of that situation. <laughs> yeah, he pulled some sort of lever off the control panel. <laughs> I don't know if that was related to what happens later or if that was just something the animators added in or something that was in the serial to begin with that wasn't related. But anyway. Yeah, we should mention episodes one and four were animations. Yeah, these are the last animations in the... In the show, like, at all. Yeah. Kind of sad to see them go, but <laughs> but not not very sad. <laughs> like uh, when Dodo left. Kind of sad to see her go, but not really, because yeah. the ride out was just yep. terrible. Um, so, yeah, they've safely made it to Earth, and uh, the Doctor postulates that they're um, in England, and they are. And, Again. <laughs> yeah, and he guesses that there's some point near 68, he decides they want to go look for Professor Travers, you know, the Cause... guy who's like borderline Cena at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm guessing when he tells people about the doctor, no one who wasn't, anyone who wasn't involved in the Yeti attacks just doesn't believe him and brushes him off as an insane old man. <laughs> yeah, unsurprisingly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that brings up something I want to discuss later, so I hopefully won't forget that, but, uh, they, um, they need a ride, and they're, they're near a road, so they, uh, they hitchhike for one, I guess, or a car just happens to be coming by, so they get a ride with them, him. Yeah, so he's not, he's not named, um, ever. So, yeah, so they get in the back of this guy's truck, um, this guy's pretty stern, um, doesn't seem too talkative and is pretty serious. Uh, so they drive for a while and they pull off the road into some sort of small forested area and they walk a little bit and get up to a fence. Mm-hmm. And on the other side of this fence are some armed guards and they're like, what? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> And then the guy, the driver reveals that they're in some sort of company compound for, what, inter... It wasn't international. Yeah, no, it was International Electromatics. 
uh, who's basically taken over the electronics industry Mm -hmm. of the world in the four years since the Yeti attacks. Well, I think this was set in like 72... I th- this was set in the 70s, I'm pretty oh, certain. okay. Because I think they mentioned it being like four... Of, I think, I guess, minor spoiler, but the Brigadier mentions that it's been like four years since he saw the Doctor Lost, so... Yeah. <clears throat> um, I mean, unless they were already on their way to world conquest during the Yeti attacks, I mean, we don't they know. They could have been. Yeah. Um, so they've created some sort of compound to, uh, I guess, house their workers and... Um, because because most of the most of the people in other electronics businesses have quit or the businesses have gone out of business, so they've all started working for international electromatics. Mm-hmm. Um, so they get placed in this camp type thing, and uh, apparently you can't get in or out. I mean, there's there's armed guards and they're they're, <laughs> they're trying to sneak out. I mean, I don't know how they're able to do that, but they are. Well, you find out later that guy was an agent of Unit. So he yeah. probably had forged papers. Given yeah. that the first thing that happens to him after he lets the Doctor Zoe and Jamie out when they're outside the fence is get captured by armed guards and brutally gunned down. Yeah. <laughs> he's uh he's confronted. They the guards ask to see his papers and he's like, Oh, I don't have to show you, I'm not on your premises anymore. Which is true. <laughs> but I guess they didn't care. They just shoot him. <laughs> unbeknownst to the doctor and right co. yeah uh so the doctor zoe and jamie get another ride with uh, an even less named less mentioned <laughs> less interesting person who we never see and they wind up in london and they try and find the uh the they they get the address for uh where travers is supposed to be living mm-hmm. and when they get there he's not there yeah Turns out it's been taken over by Professor Watkins. Taken over. <laughs> well, basically. Yeah. We find out that Travers and uh, Anne are in doing America. something in America. I guess they were vacationing. I don't really remember what they said they were doing. Yeah, I think Anne went on. I think they mentioned Anne went on vacation and they convinced Travers to go with her because he was getting old, I guess. <laughs> he was getting insane. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's the, his place is now, I guess, being rented out or something by, um, what's her name? Isabel. Isabel, right. Who's Professor Watkinson's daughter, Watkinson's, uh, and, uh, she's trying to be a model, I guess, but we find out that Watkins has been hired by international electromatics who i'm now going to start calling ie because it's just too long to say every time so not internet explorer but (laughs) wow (laughs) vaughn is going to take over the world using ie what what if what if internet explorer is a cover for international electromatics (laughs) it's real (laughs) No. Uh, <laughs> um so it turns out that Professor yeah, Professor Watkins is working for IE and the doctor thinks maybe Watkins can help him if tra- because Travers isn't in town and Right, I think we forgot to mention that the whole reason they want to find Travers is so he can help them repair this circuit type thing that broke. Yeah, from the TARDIS. And yeah. the TARDIS is invisible now, by the way. <laughs> I should mention that because I don't know how that works. <laughs> <clears throat> Hey, a bunch of weird stuff was going down at the beginning of this serial. Yeah, and very tense, like, spy-like music. Did you yeah. hear the music? Yeah, I liked the music a lot Yeah, the this music serial. was good. It made the scenes way more creepy than they would have been otherwise, which is a good thing. So um, anyway, Isabel is, origin- is initially reluctant to tell them, you know, how to get to Watkins, but eventually, because the doctor fixes her camera, because her camera conveniently breaks right as the doctor walks in, <laughs> She tells him to go check the wall for the phone number. <laughs> right, because she only wi- writes things down on the wall because I guess she thinks or knows she'll lose p- pieces of paper. Well, she keeps saying you can't lose a wall, and then the doc says you can't lose a wall, which makes me think it's like foreshadowing for later in the serial, where all the walls just disappear for some <laughs> reason. I don't know. 
that yeah that's the that's the evil goal of ie is to destroy all walls um but yeah so they call uh oh god this is the first I'm just going to put this out right now before we even get into it. Whoever wrote this serial hated automated answering machines. They just flat out hated them. Well, I can't think- blame them. But, but Do you think they were that prevalent in 68? Maybe they were just starting to be. And the guy's like, what the hell is this? I hate these things. So he incorporated it into the serial. <laughs> um... So yeah, the doctor calls IE, and it's an automated answering machine, and um, he make, it's he's not getting anywhere. Like Anyone who's ever used these things knows how the doctor feels right here. Well, let's be honest. It was a surprisingly advanced automated <laughs> yeah, machine. It was. Because instead of just giving you options like they do today, like push one for customer service, it just waits for you to tell it a command and then successfully interprets that command. Yep. It's way more advanced than what we had today. But then again, it was snarky as heck. Yeah. <laughs> Who programmed this thing? Why did you give it the personality of an... Well, my favorite a... thing about programming it was that when you actually saw the machine, it was using, like, tapes. Yep. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's like the uh, the war machines, right? Didn't yeah. they use tapes? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the doctor gets frustrated because he's getting nowhere. So he and Jamie decide to go to IE themselves. <laughs> and Zoe doesn't want to go because Isabella's decided that Zoe is a new model. So he's taking pictures of Zoe. Yep. In a feathered boa. Her best looking outfit to date. No, no, that's a lie, actually. <laughs> it's not better than the bright, sparkly silver <laughs> jumpsuit she was wearing yep. last week. <clears throat> yeah. But the so- feathered boa becomes an important plot point, so... Kind of. Well, that, that's how Jamie figures yeah. out. So, and that's why Jamie and the Doctor get caught again. Um. So, is that where Episode One ended? I believe. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't because they confront the machine in in the first episode. I remember because they confront a... Vaughn in the first episode. Oh yeah, they do. Um. So they go to IE. Apparently, their reception area. <laughs> I thought this was really funny. Apparently, IE's reception area is just... <laughs> I can't even it's, say It's it. just the machine that's answering the phone calls, just in the middle of a room. And the duck's like, yep. these darn automated secretaries. Then again, I, I don't think anyone really complains to the public because we find out later that most of the people who go into IE never come out. Um, but yeah, they're not getting anywhere with the machine itself, as expected. But they do get an audience with Vaughn, who's like the head CEO, president, person in charge guy. The head CEO president. <laughs> um, yeah. and um, He's the managing director. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> anyway. Okay. I, thought, I thought his name was Born until I read it on the no, wiki. No, it's Vaughn. Yeah, I thought it was Born. Jason Born. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, basically, the whole plot of these four episodes can be summed up with Jamie doesn't stop talking. Um, in episode one, he, he mentions the circuits the doctor once fixed. <coughs> Which accidentally gives him away, and he gives the circuits to Vaughn, and so he's like, oh, I'm sure we can fix these for you. Don't worry about contacting Watkins. You can leave now. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And then they leave, and the doctor's like, there's something odd about that man. Something inhuman. Right, he says he normal humans blink once every 10 to 15 seconds, but he didn't see Vaughn doing so. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Pretty shady. <clears throat> Anyway, so episode two starts, and the Doctor and Jamie are running away from this car, and they get run into an alleyway, and then surrounded on both sides by cars, and the Doctor decides that they're just going to accept their fate of being captured, and he sits down and pulls out a deck of cards and starts playing solitaire. Yep. Um, yeah. So, um, oh, we forgot to mention the, the part where Vaughn pulls back the control panel thing. 
Not and, control panel, yeah. but wall. Oh my god, it all makes sense. He wants Wait, to get rid of yeah. all walls. <laughs> uh, but no, in the back of his office, there's a there's a secret wall hidden passage thing that reveals some sort of advanced computer ish looking technology thing mm-hmm. that appears to be giving him orders. But at the same time, he is also. Well, at this point, I couldn't tell who had the upper hand in this relationship between him and the machine. Yeah. And it's still... It's still shady. Yeah. And so so I think later it's kind of hinted that they're just using each other. Mm-hmm. But but we don't really know yet because we were only halfway through. <clears throat> so, meanwhile, Zoe and uh, Isabel are still waiting for the Doctor and Jamie to get back. And they get tired of waiting, so they decide to go to IE themselves. And they write a note on the wall. Yep. <laughs> so they do so. And they confront the answering machine, and Zoe just flings a she just an flinging unsolvable ins- equation at it. Oh, I was gonna say she was flinging insults left and right, which she was. Which that that's the point which led me to believe that whoever wrote this just hated these things with a passion. Yeah, well, she <laughs> flung an uns- unsolvable equation at it, and the machine just blows up, and then Zoe and Isabel cackle like mad scientists. <laughs> They made a note about that. I was like, ha ha. And then Vaughn is like, you guys should probably go capture her. She just ruined our own sewing machine. Right. He tells that to his um, super incompetent sidekick, Packins, whatever his name Packer. was. Packer. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, we don't really see this yet, but Packer soon becomes that bumbling idiot sidekick. And I didn't think that that was quite a good fit for this serial because this serial succeeded at being serious. Like, there's some serials that are trying to be serious and they're just kind of not based on varying factors like, oh, the plot might not be that good or the uh, <clears throat> the mm-hmm. production values make me not able to take it seriously. But this serial has actually been succeeding at being pretty serious so far and Packer just kind of throws a wrench in that in well, a little I mean, bit. I wrote down, I think I left my notes sheet inside, but... Um, that the comedic timing of this serial so far was, like, really good compared to the previous serials, and I think Packer is part of that. I mean, he's not there the whole time, so in, like, the moments he's on screen, it, like, brings an element of humor that I think makes the the serial stronger. Mm, I guess. As well as other humorous moments, like the Doctor pulling out the deck of cards. Yeah. Or, like, Isabel saying she writes on the wall. I suppose. Or, Mm. like, how Zoe goes... Oh, it's fine. Nothing bad because it could have possibly happened to the doctor. And then it cuts to the doctor getting captured by the people in the alleyway. I, I guess, possibly. I'm just mainly thinking of that one long string of incompetence that happens later that that, that allows the doctor to escape. But Well, I think that can be chalked up to Packer trying harder and harder to please Vaughn and in the process getting more and more angry, I guess. which undermines all of his efforts. Yeah, I can see he, that. Because he stops focusing on what the doctor's going to do next and just trying to, and he's just trying to keep up with the doctor at that point. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, then it cuts back to the doctor and... They've been captured by whoever their captors were, and we find out that it's UNIT. The which United is, Nations Intelligence Task Force. I guess task force is one word. I didn't know that. <laughs> UNIT. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's headed by the Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. Dun, you, dun, dun. No, no, he's not a villain. <laughs> who you will remember from Web of Fear when he was only a colonel. Right. So he... Makes his return. And, uh, I don't know, I thought it wasn't really, it's not really that big of a deal, but I thought it was kind of nice that the Doctor and his companions have an ally in the era that they've yeah. appeared in. They Because they usually don't, because they usually go somewhere completely different, where they don't know anyone. Yeah, so and I think I think that's a big part of why this serial doesn't feel like it's just dragging rehash- us along. Or, like, or, or rehashed from another yeah. serial. Yeah, because they... Because they they were looking for Travers, so they already even though he doesn't appear, they are, they already like had some connection to this era, and now they've uh, remet with um, the the Brigadier General. Yeah, and I mean similarly to Web of Fear when Travers was there. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So. They the unit reveals they've been watching IE for a while, and some people go in and don't come out. 
And the reason why they got picked up by Unit is because they relayed a picture of the Doctor and Jamie to the Brigadier, and he mentioned that he knew them and they should be brought in to be, to be brought up to speed. Right. Um, I also wanted to mention, this is completely unrelated, but did you think Lethbridge Stewart's mustache was real? Because I didn't. It looked fake to me. No, yeah, I thought it was real. You did? I you might know, have thought just... it was fake because it looked like he he his mustache was bushier than it was in the Web of Fear. And he, like, grew more of it out? Not not really. I thought it was fake because it just didn't look like real hair at all. It just looked like a flat piece of whatever that he had on his upper lip. <laughs> um, maybe it was real. I'm not I'm honestly not sure. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. I just had to say it. Um, so-, so Zoe and Isabel are captured by I.E., and the Doctor and Jamie go to the Watkins' house because they're like, well, we better go fetch Zoe and Isabel. And they find a plate of sandwiches and just just decide to humorously eat them. For some reason. And they can't find a note, and the Doctor's like, oh, wait, duh, she obviously wrote it on the wall. <clears throat> so they find out that they went to I.E., so they decide to go back to I.E. to see what's up. Mm-hmm. And... And this is the part where Jamie decides oh, right. to... <laughs> they're sneaking around. <laughs> and Jamie sees the feather boa sticking out of this like casket type thing. That it it got... looks like a casket, but it's not a casket. Yeah, this this guy carries it in mm-hmm. and uh he's doing it by himself and the thing is about twice as big as him. So Jamie makes the comment that it's probably empty because he's carrying like mm-hmm. double his weight. Or he would have been if it if it weren't empty. But, but no. Yeah, he sees the feather bow sticking out and he goes, Zoe! And then they run in and get captured. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and that's for episode three. Two. Yeah, th- no, two ends. Um, we also should mention that the machine that's talking to Vaughn has mentioned that the Doctor and Jamie have been recognized from Planet 14, wherever that mm, is. But... Mm. The, um, Vaughn doesn't think that's possible, but it, he just goes with it. He's like, all right. And the machine tells Vaughn to kill the Doctor and Jamie because they're a threat to the plans. And <laughs> Vaughn is like, I don't take orders, I give them. Right. But he's still going to try and kill them. Or or at least use them for his purposes. Yeah, because the scientists brought in the, the circuits and it's like, this is completely nonsensical. This doesn't make any sense. So Vaughn is getting pretty suspicious of the Doctor at this point. Right. Um, so Zoe and Isabel have been locked up somewhere mm-hmm. in, on the premises and the doctor and Jamie are brought in, uh, well, before that Vaughn and his cohorts confront Watkins, who they had apparently been he- holding captive and they tell him that if he doesn't go along with what they want him to do, they're going to hurt Isabel. Because yeah. now they have her captive. <clears throat> so they bring in the doctor and Jamie. And then some other Yeah, stuff Vaughn happens. talks about how the circuit is completely nonsensical. And then he leaves. And then the doctor and Jamie, you know, take the circuit back. <laughs> and then um, Vaughn comes back in and he tells them that they don't have Zoe and Isabel. But if it'll help the doctor and Jamie believe him, they can check out the the boxes before they leave. And then they get to the station conveniently right after the boxes have already left. So Vaughn is like, well, we can go check them out at the other compound. Let's roll. So yep. they go. And Vaughn has an office there that's exactly identical to his one in London. Yep. Which is probably <laughs> just the production team saving money, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now, now they think about it, yeah. Um... Well, they do incorporate it into the story slightly by saying, it's the secret to my success, conformity. Which is why Vaughn just so monotone until the end of episode three, where he just goes off the rails. I also wanted to mention that I thought Vaughn might have had a glass eye, because his eyes looked kind of uneven. I don't know. Hmm. And, like, the only other person... Do you just question everyone's appearance yeah in this serial i did fake mustache yep vaughn gloss eyeball yep jamie fake hand i don't know fake hand (laughs) 
Hey, I was, reading, I was reading about a story set before the first Doctor arrives on Earth with Susan, and it's a story with the first Doctor and Susan, and in that story, the first Doctor loses his hand and gets a prosthetic made, which means that for his entire run on TV, he had a fake hand. Was this a canon thing? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was just an aside. <laughs> All right. So... Where were we? Um, so anyway, the Doctor and Jamie are able to get away from Vaughn. No, no, they're taken to, to meet with Watkins. Because Vaughn is like, well, I can let you meet with Watkins if that'll help. No, I thought that was earlier. No, that happens when they get to the other compound, because Wat- Watkins is at the other compound. Because oh, okay. at the end of episode four, they're taking Watkins back to London. Why not? Um, yeah, so meet with Watkins. And Jamie starts talking about the TARDIS, and the doc's like, I think we should talk about something else, Jamie. Right, because because they've installed cameras slash microphones in the room. And Jamie doesn't seem to catch on until the doctor goes, no, really, Jamie, we should talk about something else. And then he points to the camera, and Jamie's like, oh. <laughs> but now Vaughn knows that the doctor is some sort of spaceship. He kind of did before. Well, no, he didn't, actually. He knew the Doctor had something that had nonsensical... Yeah. And um, Vaughn is talking... Meanwhile, is talking to um, Pac- Packer, mm-hmm. I think. Or one of his other subordinates. I'm not really sure. Packer's his only named subordinate. But um, he's like, well, even if... He says something along the lines of, I think, even if the plan fails, we have an escape route. We need to secure the yeah. Doctor's machine. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> something like that. And... Um, yeah, this what is the part where they then? get away, because, um, <clears throat> so Packet is taking them to Vaughn, and, or is taking them to, like, confinement, and they're going to an elevator, and the doctor pretends to be afraid of getting in the elevator, and he tells Jamie to push the button, and then he distracts Packer and knocks him on the head, and they mm-hmm. escape into the elevator. Right, no, Vaughn gives them that, that ultimatum first. Yeah. Where if they don't assist him, some, he's gonna do something bad to Isabel, and, um... Zoe. <clears throat> but doesn't he do that when they're outside already? Because he makes the announcement over the live speaker, like, you have ten minutes before we... He, do- he does, yeah, uh, he uh, also tells them before that. Remember, he's like, you- I'll give you an hour to oh, decide. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I thought his name was Born, so I was like, Haha, he's delivering an ultimatum. <laughs> <laughs> that pun requires so many levels of misunderstanding of everything in the serial. <laughs> No, only one. Only one level of misunderstanding. <laughs> no, you would have had to misunderstand his name every time they said it. And I did. That's multiple layers of misunderstanding. And I didn't really find and I didn't really know what Packer's name was either until like the end. <laughs> I thought it was Packins until like now. Well to be fair, you watch these at like midnight. Yeah, so. I did. <laughs> um Yeah, I was kind of falling asleep by episode three, (laughs) not going to lie. But yeah, like we were saying, they... Okay, we forgot to mention the scene where before they left the Brigadier, they gave the Doctor this little radio transmitter to contact the Brigadier. And this becomes important in like 10 seconds, which we're about to get to. Um, So anyway, the Doctor and Jamie are outside, and now there's this prolonged escape scene, which basically takes up all of episode four. Yeah, which is back to animation, might, we yeah. might add. <clears throat> well, they the well, it went to animation as soon as they got to the roof. Yeah, they so, uh, yeah. they they climbed through the elevator shaft. If we didn't mention that, I'm not sure if we did. No, and then this is the start of Packer being dumb. He's like, <laughs> everybody meet on the roof. Wait, I'll take the elevator. If they're in the elevator shelf, I'll just squish them, <laughs> and that fails. <laughs> so the Doctor and Jamie get to. Uh, the the roof. They uh they because they want to go rescue Zoe and Isabel, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so um, I guess they're somewhere else on the premises. So they escape. Yeah, now, they've already escaped, but they leave the roof, and um, they find Zoe and uh, Isabel. They're on some sort of upper floor, and they need to get there. And Zoe and Isabel are like gesturing through the window. And stuff, but the doctor assumes correctly that there's probably a camera installed in the room, so he signals them not to. Yeah. 
Uh, before and they the somehow doctor, understand the signal. Yeah, the doctor, the Jamie, the, the Jamie escapes the roof episode. by like going down the fire escape, and they got they hit in a railway car. And then now there's the part where they're looking into the window and they see Zoe and Isabel. Yeah, and at this point, I wanted to mention I th- I think they're using like photoshopped real pictures for the backgrounds on some of the backgrounds because they looked fairly realistic. For the animation? Yeah, for the animation. Yeah, um, it might be. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, I think it's possible. This was reconstructed by, I believe, a company that hadn't was, done yeah, reconstructions. Cosgo Paul. Right. They This was the first uh, animation, actually. This came out in 2006, and all the other ones are... 2013. Yeah. And one, one in January of this year. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. Um... Anyway, so Unit has a helicopter in the area, and the Doctor calls for the helicopter because he knows that he learns from the Brigadier that it has a rope ladder. So the Doctor and Jamie get to the roof, and Packer is still trying to capture, catch them after Meanwhile, they hit Va- in the railway car. Vaughn is flipping out at Packer's uh, yeah. <laughs> not being able to catch them. <clears throat> um, and and uh, so the helicopter arrives, and they drop the rope ladder, and... The doctor, Zoe, Zoe and Isabel climb through the window up the rope ladder. Well, and, Jamie goes down and opens the window first from the outside. Yeah. And they all successfully make it up the rope ladder, except for Jamie, uh, who's being shot at. And they need to fly away because they're, they're getting shot at. So they just fly away with Jamie hanging on the ladder. Yeah. And by this point, Vaughn is revealed he plans to you. That Watkins is building some sort of like emotion machine. He's building a, a well, a teaching device or something like that. Yeah, it's, that can, but it can also influence emotions. And You're like hmm, emotions, what villain? <laughs> and he's planning on using that to control the invasion force that's coming from the machine. And he decides mm. that because Unit is basically on them, that the invasion will move forward. But he also somehow convinces the leader of Unit, General Rutledge, to stop investigating. <clears throat> so, uh, I guess the Doctor and Co. have made it presumably back to Unit's base thing that they were at before, but yeah. they're, they're somewhere, and they meet with uh, Lethbridge Stewart again, and uh, through some conversation, uh, Stewart and um, Isabel reveal that there have been UFO sightings lately. Mm-hmm. And the doctor's like, hmm, UFO sightings. Right, because the doctor oh, mentioned right. the yeah, thing yeah. on the other side of the moon. Right. So they think it might have that might have something to do with the UFO sightings. And the doctor's starting to put two and two together. He's and like, he hmm. decides they should go back to IE. And James's like, you're insane. And then the doctor's <laughs> like, Stuart, Lethbridge Stuart, you wouldn't have to be able to obtain a canoe, would you? And then it just cuts to a scene of a Dr. Jamie rowing the canoe down a river into the IE base. Yep. One of those moments was like great comedic timing. Um, so they're sneaking around IE again, because that worked out so well the last time. And well, it's going to work out worse this time. Because they stumble across a room with some sort of pod... And out of the pod comes a Cyberman. Dun, dun, <laughs> dun! And that's where episode four ends. And that's how far we watch this week. Great place to stop. Yeah, it actually, yeah, yeah. actually, it actually if we, was. If we had like, stopped in any of the first three, we would have yeah, been it, terrible. Wouldn't have been terrible, but I just would have been like, okay. Well, the, action f- the first four episodes kind of all flowed together. Yeah. It'd be like one big action sequence. So if we'd stopped in the middle, it would have just kind of been awkward. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't have given me nearly as much incentive to want to go back and keep watching it. I mean, I would have, obviously, but <laughs> but now I'm actually really interested to see how it pl- all plays out. Because, uh, and I also wanted to mention that they did a really good job with this reveal. Because yeah. unlike the Wheel in Space, I guess, might have been going for... You don't know it's the Cybermen for like one and a half episodes and then mm-hmm. you do or like two episodes. But like you and probably other people did realize it was the Cybermen when yeah. they were showing the silhouette thing. I mean, I didn't see it. So, you know, I, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't put it together. But and then but then they revealed the Cybermen right in episode three in a very anticlimactic scene. It was just them sitting at a control panel. 
Whereas in this, if you didn't already know the cy- it was the Cybermen who were behind everything, like there was no possible way you would have guessed. Like I didn't see it coming at all. Well, so they, when the well, Cybermen they, they broke were hinting out, at it throughout. Yeah, but it, the, the hints were subtle enough that yeah. where when once you know it's the Cybermen, you're like, hmm, that was a that was foreshadowing. Well, once you get to the the one about using the emotion, like hitting them with emotions to control them. If you know the history of the Cybermen well enough, you could probably have guessed. Yeah, that but that point. was that was it yeah, was still good because it was yeah. in episode four. Yeah, it wasn't like episode one where you're like hmm, maybe it's the Cybermen. <laughs> yeah, and it is. But like they know they slowly built up the hints to the point where you're like, hey, wait a minute, is it gonna be the and then the Cyberman pops out. Yeah. And it looks like the Cybermen have been redesigned again. Yeah, yeah, they have, actually. Um, uh, I re- I, it was only on screen for like a second and a half at most, so I didn't really notice it. But I did read online that they had been redesigned. And this is their final major, major redesign until... Um, the reboot, I think. Or until late into the... I, I, think, it's, I think it was the, the 80s. Yeah, probably. Um, um, which makes me assume that if you've watched the most recent season of Doctor Who, you know, the Cybermen show up. And they make a reference to the old Cybermen, but I won't spoil that for you guys. And it makes me think they're referencing this serial, but... Hmm, that would be coincidental. <clears throat> um, yeah, this is also the Cybermen's last major appearance I read until, until 75. 75. Yeah. Um, so it looks like from now until 75, we'll be getting hopefully a string of original villains, since the Daleks don't come back until... Yeah. well, the Master's going to show up. Well, yeah, the Master will show up. Probably at the very start of the third Doctor's run, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, hopefully original villains. I think that'll be cool. That they're not going to like reuse the Daleks and the Sidemen over and over again. Yeah. Um, And, you know, as as we're watching it, I've I've mentioned this multiple times before, but like when we're based on the way we're watching it, the Daleks and the Cybermen show up quite frequently, but... Mm-hmm. I think we have to put ourselves back yeah. in the shoes of people who are watching this in the 60s where it would have been weeks on end Maybe where they didn't months. appear. Yeah. Um, like in, in like the previous season, the Cybermen showed up in the first and last serial of the season, which would have been two or three months apart if you were watching Almost it. a year, actually. Remember? Yeah, okay. almost a year because it would have been the whole season. But for us, it was like two months or yeah. seven weeks. And, and even between... Um, between like Wheel in Space and this, there is a considerable m- yeah because there would have been a break between seasons and then there would have been the two previous serials yeah. <clears throat> I think the interesting thing to note was that you were talking about how this Cyberman reveal was done better in the than the Wheel in Space and I think that's probably chalked up to different writers and I think that's interesting because both of these both actually all the Cyberman stories so far have been quote unquote based on ideas by Kit Peddler but then written by yeah. different people so I think. It's interesting to see how different writers tackle ideas from the same person. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm assuming Kit Peddler just threw out the basic bones of the plot. I mean, Kit Peddler and Jerry Davis wrote The Tenth Planet, which was the original introduction to Cybermen. And then I guess Kit Peddler kind of threw out these ideas, and then the writers were like, hey, we'll run with that. Yeah. Which Um, we can talk about more when we get to the end of this serial. Yeah. And we know how the whole serial plays out, obviously. Yeah, we're not going to have very much to say on this in this episode because we haven't watched it all yet um Mm -hmm. but what was i gonna say well oh yeah i mean i also kind of chalked up the better reveal this time uh to the fact that they might have not have been going for something like this last time yeah they may have been trying to go for more uh espionage feel for this serial which i think they've accomplished so far yeah they have i mean with all the sneaking around Mm -hmm. and uh i don't know the premise i really like the premise for this uh it's interesting in the fact that it's not unlike a lot of other serials we've watched it's not slightly evil human is introduced as the main villain but then is revealed to be controlled by something else or some mm-hmm. sort of alien force. No, this is this is Vaughn and uh presumably the cyber controller, I guess, um, or something along those lines. But they're mm-hmm. so, they're working together, but at the same time they're at odds with each other. So there's the doctor yeah. and his group working against Vaughn, obviously, but then there's also dissent amongst the ranks, so to speak, mm-hmm. within the villains. <clears throat> and yeah. I kind of wanna I'm interested to see how that plays out. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see next week. Uh, what's going to happen with 
probably, I'm guessing, the Vaughn storyline is going to fall away and the Cybermen are just going to kill him. Like they did in Tomb of the Cybermen <laughs> where, um, what's his name? Yeah. Tried to take over the Cybermen and they just ended up killing him. Yeah. I don't um, know. I'm, but you I'm, know, predictions can always be wrong and they probably are. So, Well, maybe not, but I hope they do go a different route than, oh, Cybermen just kill everyone at the start of episode five and now they're the main villains. But, you know, like I was saying, I hope they kind of are at odds with each other. And, um, I don't know, Vaughn has that emotion controlling machine, so, hmm. That's true, the main, the main aspect of the Cybermen is that they remove your emotions when you become a <laughs> Cyberman, so that could be an effective weapon against them. But who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Stop doing that! Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> I don't think we have anything else we can say about the serial without having watched the whole thing, obviously. Right. Um, we can talk about animation a little bit. We kind of already did. Yeah. Um, this was I, the last animation, yeah. like we said. Do um, a animation retrospective. Say yeah. goodbye to animations. Yeah, I guess. I mean, personally, I don't have much to say on animations that hasn't already been said in previous episodes. But yeah. overall, they, they look like Flash animations, which wasn't a bad thing, but... Um, the, That's the route they went? Yeah. I guess because it was cheaper that way. Yeah. Um, some of them were a lot more detailed than others. Like, this wasn't as... The, the character designs in this weren't as detailed as, say, like, Reign of Terror. Not that Reign of Terror was good because of all the angle changes, but, like, the, the facial expressions in Reign of Terror and things like... Uh, like, Tenth Planet, even. Yeah. The facial The facial expressions were pretty good they managed to capture like the subtle expression changes that you'd get with live action pretty mm -hmm. well especially with patrick Troughton, who likes to use his face when he acts a lot more than hartnell <laughs> or any of the previous actors did mm -hmm. which was pretty noticeable once you actually saw the recovered footage of the second doctor and i think um i don't remember what else oh uh I think it would be interesting to see if any of these serials were ever recovered to like watch the animation next to the original serial because obviously when you're animating it, you, you're making certain choices about how you want the actors to look and where you want them to stand. Right. And you've only got like scripts or people's memories to go on to try and reconstruct the original serial. Yeah. And like we've mentioned before with, with reconstructions, it's not always accurate to the original. Yeah, I mean, um, like when we watched Enemy of the World, or when I watched the reconstruction yeah. and the recovered... Um, <clears throat> You can tell that some of the reconstruction like maybe misinterpreted a scene slightly or misinterpreted how people interacted. And I think I, I think that's interesting to see how different people interpret the scenes based on like a script or from memory. Yeah. <clears throat> and um I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's about I can it. guess we can just close that out by saying that as of right now it's been announced that the underwater menace is supposed to be being animated but there's been no news on if that's ever coming out at this point so but if it does maybe we'll watch yeah. it i'm not going back to the underwater menace not if you paid me that's the one with atlantis yeah i know <laughs> it has zaroff that was its only redeeming quality don't now you want to see that zaroff reaching through the great scene that was only a reconstruction animated well all i have to say is get on that planet 55 I'll watch it. Will you? Yeah, because I want to see that Zaroff reaching through the great scene. <laughs> All right, just watch that one With scene. With the giant plunger. <laughs> uh, so email us at thedoctordecadivevegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants. Uh, yeah, check out the website if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening to this on iTunes. It's, the decorative it's just decadivevegetable.com. Say the for some reason. DecorativeVegetable.com. It's happening with the site now. The Barbara, the Jamie. <laughs> Just start appending, pre-pending the to everything you say. <clears throat> and yeah, check out the YouTube channel. Trust your doctor. Episodes are slowly being backlogged onto YouTube. So if yep. you have friends who absolutely hate listening on the website for whatever reason, <laughs> you can direct them to the YouTube channel. That's trust your, that's, you, yeah. trust your doctor. You can find it if you search under users for trust your doctor. And uh, check out the Facebook, which is also Trust Your Doctor, unsurprisingly. <laughs> uh, interesting facts, things we forgot to mention in the uh, episodes themselves. Picture this week. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. 
Next so week. So next week we have uh, the rest of this serial, the final four episodes of The Invasion. But until then, the end. Thank <laughs> you.